What do you know about Mary, the mother of Jesus? Obviously, she's a virgin, and she's married to Joseph the carpenter. That she's just like God's wife or something like that? I really don't know much about Mary, the mother of Jesus. Unfortunately, I don't know that much, so I may get in a little in trouble with God. The wife of Joseph and she had the Immaculate Conception. She um, is the mother of Jesus. She had a lot of hardships through her life, and she's a good lady. Mary was a virgin who led her life peacefully and nicely, and I think that's what girls should mostly follow. Mary was like a virgin. She uh, was still a virgin. I guess she was a virgin, they say. She was a virgin? She was a virgin. She gave birth to Jesus. She raised Jesus. She was the mother of Jesus, married to Joseph. Just a mo loving mother and this should be the symbol for just good parenting. She w was a nice lady. She's a great lady and yeah. She like a role model to you? Yes, she is. She was a virgin and gave birth to um, our savior. She's another one who has a lot of faith in God who could be a good role model. Most of us know Mary as the mother of Jesus, who was immaculately conceived and lived a life of purity and service to God. When we think of her, we often picture a porcelain statue from church or a grandparent's house. Usually, she is depicted with a serene expression on her face and wearing a long blue veil with arms outstretched. Other images show Mary holding Jesus in her arms, both when he was a baby and later on in his life when he was taken down from the cross. As Catholics, these depictions resonate deeply with our beliefs and devotion to the Blessed Mother. What we believe about Mary, that's what we'll be talking about today. Hi everyone, I'm Abe. And I'm Kristen. And, and this, this is, is Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. Most of the teens on the street had a basic understanding of who Mary is and what she represents for Christians. We'll talk to them more in a few minutes, as well as meet our studio guests. But first, let's meet our spotlight guest, Diana Von Glan, host of the hit series on EWTN, The Faithful Traveler. She'll share with us who Mary is to her and why she is so revered in the Catholic faith. Let's hear her now. I believe that Mary is the mother of God and she was conceived without sin. She is our heavenly mother and she intercedes for us to her heavenly son, Jesus. I believe that she is here to help us in many ways, like she did at the wedding feast at Cana where everybody was sitting around and the wine was gone. Mary says to the servants, do what he tells you. And that was when he did his first miracle. So I always think of Mary like that, you know, whenever I have something that I want to ask for help or for guidance, I always look to Mary for that kind of intercession to her son. My mom is my best friend. It's because of her that I have a relationship with Mary and that I have a relationship with God. A mother's role is huge. And for our mother in heaven, it's even more huge than, than our earthly mother. You know, I think a lot of people, especially non-Catholics, will be like, well, why don't you just ask God? You know, I'm just gonna go to the source. Yes, you know, yes, we pray to God and, you know, we love him, but we also recognize that, you know, Jesus asked us to love his mother. You know, when he was on the cross, he said to St. John, this is your mother. And he said to Mary, this is your son. And so in that sense, he gave the Blessed Mother to all of us as a heavenly mother. You know, I think what you said about Mary being a mother figure is a really strong point because Mary is a great symbol of motherhood. Well, let's see what our studio guests have to say about this topic. Okay, and they are Catherine, Mary, Jamie, Matt, Elena, Phil, and Justin. So who is Mary to you? Well, first off, she's not the wife of God. <laughs> <laughs> um, to me, Mary is the mother of salvation. She, when the angel Gabriel came to her, she didn't say, no, I'm not gonna take on this, this opportunity, you know? She said yes to, to God, and she said, I'm going to do what you asked me to do. So she was humble enough, and she took on the service. I would have to say she's the mother of our, of our church. Just like a mother in a family, she nurtures and protects us. Mary, um, she is like the greatest virgin, and she just reeked of purity. And, you know, considering she had Jesus when she was our age, I mean, thinking of virginity and purity of teens right now, you don't hear it very often. So I think uh, she was just great with those beautiful virtues. 
She's just the mother of Jesus. She's like a perfect role model. Mary is a symbol of, like I said, motherhood. She's a symbol of chastity because as many people may argue, oh, she couldn't have been a virgin, she had a kid. That's a part of the faith, you know, you, we believe that she was. And she's a symbol of holiness. She was without sin. She could be a symbol for nurses, you know, at, in a hospital, like just having that nurturing spirit for her son. And she has many titles, you know, and she is also the Holy Mother of God. Diana also used the term Heavenly Mother to describe Mary. We asked the teens on the street what words they would use to describe her. What are words you would use to describe Mary? Wonderful, uh, beautiful, very intelligent. Beautiful, brave, and strong. Nice, patient. Awesome. Strong, resilient. Unique. She's kind. She's uh, faithful. Confident, brave. I guess purity would be her word. Faithful, and she was understanding of God's will. From what I heard from the Bible, a loving mother took care of her son. I say nurturing and caring and someone that someone can look up to. Well, these are all great examples of words and names that describe Mary. Our Catholic faith actually designates titles to Mary as Queen of Peace, Mother of Mercy, the Immaculate Conception, Mother of Good Counsel, and more. Is there any particular name or title that really resounds with you when it comes to Mary? I would have to say Our Lady of Guadalupe, that term for Mary, because I've always enjoyed that story. I have prayer cards of that and statues, and I really enjoy that term of hers. I think simply Mary, Mother of God, is definitely the most acknowledged title of her. It's definitely the easiest to remember. I would say the Virgin Mother, because it shows how unique she is, because she was a mother, and she was also a virgin. I like the Blessed Mother, because what more of a blessing can you have to be the mother of salvation? I don't think anyone can fathom, you know, being so blessed that to know that God picked you to be the mother of salvation. That's awesome. I know for me, I really like the term that a lot of people use, queen of peace. Because I know for me, like if I pray Hail Mary or if I think about Mary or like, they, like we said earlier, if you see Mary, she's usually very peaceful and very serene. And I think that's something that she really gives to people. I think for me, it has to be the Virgin Mother, because as I said before, that's a, that's a part of it that a lot of people joke around about, like, you know, she couldn't have been a virgin, you know, and that's one thing that needs to be stressed, that she was. And, you know, people try to take away from her purity and people try to take away from the seriousness of who she was sometimes, you know. So that is probably one of the strongest titles for me. With all of these titles referring to Mary's important place in the church and her role in the life of Christ, it is no wonder why she is so admired. Next, our spotlight guest Diana talks to us about what she admires most about Mary. There are so many things to admire about the Blessed Virgin. Her humility is a huge thing. We're a big me society. We all want to be on Facebook. We want everybody looking at us all the time. And Mary wasn't like that at all. And yet she had such a hugely important role in all of our lives. But she was really kind of in the shadows. She did what she needed to do to raise her son. I admire that she said yes to God in all things and in difficult things and in ways that she didn't know what was gonna happen, you know, when, when the angel Gabriel came and said, hi, you're gonna have the Son of God, you know. She, she didn't, you know, freak out. She trusted in him. She had just an insane amount of trust to God and her yes just resounds through the centuries. And I think that's difficult for us today to say yes to God because sometimes he asks us to do some difficult things, like he asked her. She got pregnant before she got married. And even today, that's not an easy thing to happen. And yet she trusted that God would make it okay. And, you know, St. Joseph had his, whole, his role in that as well. And, you know, but she trusted that he would make it happen. So what does Mary's willingness to serve God mean to you? Well, like Diana said in the interview, she said that most people on, like, who are on like Facebook and uh, stuff like that online, they want to be like the center of the spotlight, but Mary wasn't like that at all. I like how uh, Diana mentioned about um, Mary putting trust in God and taking a risk. It's very admirable to like 
have an angel come to you and say you have to do this. You have to be basically the, give birth to the salvation of all humanity, past, present, and future. And to have so much trust that you say, all right, God, I'm willing to do that. That takes a lot. It would take a lot of guts to be able to do that. Especially with her being a teenager still. She was able to trust somebody that she couldn't even see. I mean, it's hard for us as teenagers and as humans to trust one another. By saying yes, and her service to God is an example for us, you know, to do whatever God asks us to do. It's obviously not going to be as big as being the mother of salvation, but, you know, whatever task, whether it's small, whether it's helping out in our family, knowing that it's for God and we have to say yes in our life. Mary had a lot to risk. She wasn't even married yet. She was bearing a child. And, I mean, best case scenario, she would have been stoned to death. She just gave herself up completely to God and just said, yes, I'll do this, and I trust you. You know, and having that much trust in God, like, that should be an example to all of us. Let's go back to Diana, where she'll share how she finds strength in her devotion to Mary. Especially in meditating on the sorrows Mary experienced and witnessing the passion of her son. We think about Christ's passion. We meditate on it when we pray the Sorrowful Mysteries of the Rosary, and it blows my mind to think that this woman watched her son die in such a horrific manner. He was scourged at the pillar. They spit on him and they hit him and they yelled all sorts of horrible things about him. They nailed his hands to a cross. They crucified him, they killed him. And she watched it all. I can't even imagine watching somebody that I love die in such a horrific manner. And yet, again, she trusted that it was all for something greater. Um, you know, her pain was not as important as Christ's sacrifice. That's also another really great example for us, um, you know, to, to stand by our family members, um, you know, when we love them and when they're doing things that make us proud and when they're frustrating us. Christ calls us to love our neighbor. He calls us to love one another as we love him. He calls us to love our enemies and she loved him no matter what, and she loves us no matter what. So it's that unconditional love that, that Christ taught us and that, that he teaches us through his mother as well. Have you ever thought about the passion of Jesus from the perspective of his mother Mary? I have. I mean, there's a statue called the Pieta, and it's of Mary holding Jesus, and her face, she just looks so terrible because she's holding her son and he's dead, and that, it really makes you think, Oh my gosh, she suffered so much through this whole entire tragedy. It also makes me think about our mothers and our grandmothers. For me, my grandma, one day I came home and I was really upset. I was crying on the couch and my grandma starts crying with me. And in that moment, I realized when I pain, my grandmother pains. And when Jesus was dead, and even as a child, when Jesus got hurt, Mary also felt that pain. So that connection between mother and child and that we all have, because we all have moms, dads, parents. That connection is, is something so beautiful. Yeah, like there's a scene in the movie The Passion where Jesus is carrying the cross to Calvary and he falls the first time. And they show Mary like in the crowds and they show her like flashback to when Jesus was little and he fell. And she like picked him up, dusted him off, wiped his tears away and said, don't worry, it's gonna be okay. And they show like, they really did a good job showing the, the emotion of Mary and like, it only shows us a glimpse of what she really felt on that day, watching her son fall, and it was really touching. I think that made it real for me, like the emotions of Mary. You know, we always think death is such a sad thing, but I think it's more sad to actually not see maybe your parents die, but to see your child die. I think that's even a harder pain, and she also had to watch him suffer along with that. As Kristen said, you know, with the, the movie, The Passion of the Christ, I mean, so many people were so shocked and surprised by the brutality of it all. But that so much didn't surprise me as was the scene with Mary and I, I never thought about the crucifixion of Jesus through Mary's eyes. But when I saw that movie and I saw her reactions, the things that were happening, I forgot that she was there watching her son die. But I mean, the, all, the, all the bloodshed and the, all that, that didn't really surprise me. It was a crucifixion. But when you saw her face, like when she saw him fall, that was just like, that kind of tears you up inside, at seeing a mother watching her son just die. 
St. Bernard of Clairvaux wrote a beautiful prayer called the Memorare, which says, Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. This is a beautiful way of saying that Mary is the mother who cares for God's people, hears our prayers, helps our needs, and protects us. The church has a long tradition of turning to Mary for protection, especially through the powerful prayer of the rosary. And what is the rosary exactly? And have you ever prayed it? That's what we asked the teens on the street. Let's check it out. I believe there's 12 beads and you say uh, Hail Marys and then on every big bead I believe it is, you say an hour father or an act of contrition. I don't know, don't quote me on it. Rosary? Never heard of it. I actually have no idea what the rosary is. <laughs> Do I know what the rosary is? Unfortunately, no, I should know what it is. I have no idea what that is. To be honestly true, I've only known rosary is, is something that people wear around their neck. I've actually never heard the actual meaning of it. I would love to know, learn what it is so I could explain what it is. I know what the rosary is, but like, I haven't, I haven't prayed it. The rosary is like uh, a stream of beads and you have to say the Hail Marys. And yeah, yeah I've, I've prayed with the rosary before. I haven't in a while, but I know. I know the prayer and I know I have my own rosary beads. And Do you pray the rosary? And if you have, how is it important to you? You know, I have a rosary. I just, I guess I don't pray as often as I should with it, just like the one teenager was saying. But um, it's always hanging up in my room, and I have a couple of them, and some of them are really special to me. After dinner, a lot of times my family would just like sit in the living room and pray together, and it kind of brings us closer. Yeah, I have a similar experience with my family. Like after dinner, before we go to bed, or sometimes in car trips, like every night we try to say the rosary, if not the whole thing, at least a decade. And like you said, it really brings the family together, and I find it very peaceful, and it's really enjoyable for me and my family. My great-grandfather prays the rosary every morning, in the afternoon, and before he goes to bed. So when I'm over his house, I sit there and I pray with him. That's like a moment that we share, and it's special to us. Me and my family will once in a while get together and have like a session where we do the whole rosary and we go through different mysteries of the rosary. And I mean, a lot of people uh, misconstrue prayer to Mary and praying the rosary as worshiping Mary. I got in a debate with a friend of mine a while ago and he brings up, oh, what about Mary? When you guys pray, pray to her, you're worshiping her. You shouldn't pray to Mary. Jesus Christ is God and you can only pray to him. I tried to explain to him that prayer wasn't worship. Well, he didn't want to hear it at first, so I asked him, do you have any dead family members? He said no, but I continued saying, well, for people who do have dead family members, a lot of them will often go visit their family members in their graves, and they'll talk to them. That is in a form praying. You pray to the people who've passed on. You're not worshiping them, you're speaking to them, the people who are up there in heaven with God. And that's what Mary is. She's a, an intermediator between us and Jesus. And she speaks to him for us. As Diana, I believe, said with the wedding at Cana, where she talked to him for the people whose wedding it was. And when they asked her first, and she went to Jesus, and then she turned to the people and said, do whatever he tells you. So that's what Mary is. And that's what the rosary means to me. It's speaking to her who can speak for you to Jesus. The rosary is a set of prayers for Mary's intercession or special involvement when praying to God. The recited prayers include repeated Hail Marys, Glory Bees, and Our Fathers. But the main prayer of the rosary is the mysteries that we reflect on while we pray. They help us reflect on Mary and Jesus' life and to spend time praying for others or meditating on God's plan for us. Next, Diana talks to us about why the rosary is often considered the perfect prayer and how praying it can help us to grow closer to Christ through his mother. I've read that the rosary is considered the perfect prayer in the sense that at its most basic level, it's made up of the Our Father, the Hail Mary, the Glory Be, and the Apostles' Creed. The idea of the rosary is that we're praying the Our Father and the Hail Mary and the Glory Be, but we're meditating, we're thinking about the mysteries of the rosary. So there are the joyful mysteries, which are the joyful moments of, of Jesus and Mary's life, the sorrowful mysteries, the passion, and then Pope John Paul II added the luminous mysteries, which, you know, the transfiguration and the uh, inst institution of the Eucharist. And then there are the glorious mysteries, which are the resurrection and the assumption of Mary and that kind of thing. And so, you, you know, while you're praying the Hail Mary and the Our Father, you're, you're thinking about these aspects of life and you're thinking about the graces that God gives us through them. 
Mary's yes. You know, what, what graces can we learn from that? Christ's passion, what, what graces? I don't think there's ever gonna be a time in our life when we completely grasp the whole thing and everything that we can learn from the life of Christ and the life of the Blessed Mother. And the rosary really enables us to do that by saying the prayers. You know, the Hail Mary comes from the Annunciation when Archangel Gabriel said, Hail Mary, full of grace. The visitation when Mary went to go visit St. Elizabeth and she said, blessed are you among women. It's Bible verse and then we're saying, pray for us, the Our Father. Christ taught us the Our Father. So the prayers that we're saying come from the Bible. They come from the words of an angel, a saint, and the Son of God, <laughs> you know? So, you know, it doesn't get much better than that. So the rosary is a very powerful prayer, a powerful way of thinking about Christ's life. Pope John Paul II said that we can learn a lot from Mary. He said, from Mary, we learn to surrender to God's will in all things. From Mary, we learn to trust even when all hope seems gone. From Mary, we learn to love Christ, her Son, and the Son of God. The Pope, who dedicated his papacy to Mary, took as his motto the words, Totus to us, Maria, all for you, Mary. Next, we asked the teens on the street if they or someone they know has a devotion to Mary. My mother and my, and my father a bit. My grandmother? I know quite a few people who are religious. Well, I believe a lot of people that go to church and pray would have a relationship to Mary. I would say my mom. I would say my grandmother on my father's side, she does. She's really religious, like she, she, she prays to her all the time, Jesus and everything. Are there ways that you show your devotion to Mary? Once every year, me, my mom, my grandmom, and my sisters will go out in our backyard and crown the statue of Mary that we have. I like to keep pictures of my family in my wallet, and one day one of these girls at school was like, why do you keep a picture of the Blessed Mother in your purse with your pictures of your family? And I go, well, you know, it reminds me that the Blessed Mother is there for me whenever I need her, just like my mom and my sisters. The Blessed Mother is part of who I am, and it reminds me of who I am, and it keeps me grounded. Every year, um, my youth group that, I, that I'm in, um, we go out and we, there's a statue in front of our church, it's St. Veronica's, and we just pray the rosary. In the morning and before I go to bed, I'll say a Hail Mary, and it, you know, it enlightens my day and it helps me to fall asleep. And it's a good prayer to pray if you're struggling or if you have a problem. As Catholics, we have many ways to show our devotion to our Heavenly Mother. We can use things like statues, pictures, and medals to help us meditate on her and the ways her openness to God brought grace. But it's very important to remember that these things are only reminders. They are not idols to be worshiped. They are icons, objects that remind us of a deeper meaning to help us pray. Finally, the faithful traveler, Diana Van Glan, discusses the various ways we can show our devotion to Mary. And shares with us the beauty of the Miraculous Medal Shrine in Philadelphia. We're here at the Miraculous Medal Shrine in Philadelphia. The Miraculous Medal is also Our Lady of Grace as she appeared to St. Catherine La Barre in Paris many, many centuries ago. And that, I've always had a great devotion to her. Our Lady of the Rosary as she appeared to the children at Fatima. The Rosary is something that I have been praying my whole life. So I have a, a real devotion to her under that title. Our Lady of Akita, which is an apparition that occurred in Japan. And Our Lady of La Salette and Our Lady of Nock. The thing I love the most about Mary when she appears to different people. She always kind of takes on their physical characteristics. And I always think it's so nice of her because it's like, well, here, you're getting an apparition from heaven, but I'm gonna look like you so I don't scare you all that much. You know, and I think of Saint Juan Diego, who was the Mexican Indian that she appeared to in Mexico. She appeared as an Aztec princess and she had a, a darker complexion and she looked like his people at Lourdes uh, when she met with St. Bernadette. She spoke her French, which was not today's French. It was a, a kind of colloquial French. I think that's really fascinating that she does that. When she, she appears to different people, she speaks different languages, but she's always saying the same thing. Pray and turn to God and listen to my son and do what he says. It's almost like a broken record. Way back from the wedding feast at Cana, do what he says. She's always drawing people to Christ. It's not, again, going back to her humility, it's not about her. The communion of saints and, and the Blessed Mother, they all point to him. It's not, hey, pray to me, because I can do all these great things. It's, look, I have all these graces that I can give you through my son, so ask for them. When she appeared to St. Catherine Labre, she showed her all these rings that she had. And the rings had all these different rays of light, and some of the rings didn't have rays of light coming from them. And St. Catherine said, well, you know, what's, what's the story with those rings? And she said, 
The rings that have rays of light are the graces that people have requested from me and that I have given them. And the rings that don't have rays of light are the graces that people don't ask for. And so, you know, again, she's telling her, ask and I will bring these requests to my son. I know the story of St. Catherine Labre is a great story and on our Mary statue here, these, this is the front and this is the back of the Miraculous Medal. The Miraculous Medal is something that really means a lot to me because the Blessed Mother sits with St. Catherine Labre and she says, this is what I want you to do and this is what I want on the medal. And everything on the medal has a symbol. And it's just so beautiful that the Blessed Mother loves us so much that she gives us a medal that we can that we can hold in our hands and be reminded of her. You might find that by looking to Mary as a mother who has a relationship with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. You have a new relationship with your faith. Look through Mary's eyes, the eyes of an open-hearted, inspired, strong, and faithful woman. And you will see that her gaze is fixed on Jesus. Take advantage of this new way to experience Jesus and grow closer to him. So how can you grow in your devotion to our mother Mary? We'd love to hear from you. Contact us at realfaithtv.com. Or follow us on Twitter. And we'll leave you today with this quote from Pope John Paul II. Mary is the sure path to our meeting with Christ. Devotion to the mother of the Lord when it is genuine. Is always an impetus to a life guided by the spirit and values of the gospel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless.